Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. Today we're doing a part two of the week 14 recap. We got six more games here to go over. If you did not hear part one, go check that out on uh, Monday or Sunday night, Monday's episode of the podcast where we have we talk about the first seven games. So today's we're going to start off with Colts, Raiders. Colts win 44-27 behind Phillip Rivers throwing two touchdowns. Jonathan Taylor decided to become a player here. 20 carries, 150 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, he just – he looked really good. And remember early on in the year when the guy was getting benched for Jordan Wilkins. Like, what was going on? And he's now come out these last three games. Like, this was this is obviously the best of the bunch. But last week he had 13 carries for 91, caught three for 44 and touchdown. The game before that was 22 for 90 and four for 24 through the air. And then this game obviously better than those even. But he's become a really good player now these last couple of weeks. And, man, if you had him – and you actually play, you continue to play him, you're feeling really good right now. So just massive game we'll, for Jonathan Taylor. We'll find out. Yeah, that one's – he definitely hurt <laughs> his, his owners uh, yep. earlier in the season a little bit. But you know who else is the exact same trajectory as him who we completely wrote off was T.Y. Hill. The last three yep. games he's been phenomenal and yes. just out of nowhere. And today was his best yep. game yet. It was – Three weeks ago against Tennessee, he was 81 in a touchdown, then 110 for a touchdown, and today he was 86 yards and two touchdowns. He yeah. – and I've actually – I did see a couple people play him. They needed someone to put in. They rode the hot hand, and they yep. got rewarded for it. I'll, I'll be quite honest, ballsier than I would have been in the playoffs. But, hey, it, it definitely worked out. I don't, know, I don't know if there's something to do with maybe him and Rivers are just finally on the same page. Maybe that's what it took. I don't know. It's, um, we'll wait because didn't he get a groin injury today? He might. I, think, I, didn't, I didn't see the end of that thing. So I think he. I think it he was, might have because I was watching. I, I, you know, flipping back and forth between all these games and stuff. I was watching towards the end, and now um, I did not see him in the in the in the game there. Yeah. So that must have been when that Which, was. Don't want to take anything away from what he's been able to do the last three weeks, but as yep. soon as you throw that up there, you're kind of like, oh no, <laughs> you're right. like exactly all back to where we begin, where you know, soft tissue injuries and you know, ty being a little bit you know, aging a little bit, but the, the players they need in order to make a run at the playoffs are producing right now. It's very, it's very interesting team, but Hey, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. What the injury is like. Over for the Raiders, Derek Carr threw for 316 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. One went to Nelson Aguilar who had five for a hundred in the touchdown. And then uh, Darren Waller was seven for 75, you know, not as good as last week. Right. That was uh Last week was much better than this. Josh Jacobs, uh, 13 for 49. He messed with everybody early on uh, before the game. I think on Instagram, he, he, he said he wasn't playing. And um, I guarantee you there's more than one person that took him out of their lineup and put De- 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 Devontae Booker in or something. But if you put if you took Josh Jacobs out and you put somebody else in because of that and it wasn't Devontae Booker, you actually probably made the right move. Yes, he only had 70, what, 74 total yards, so not much for Josh Jacobs there. Just, Raiders, just um, not a great game from then. Colts are a good team. Colts are just, just a really solid team, and not much going on for the Raiders there. How about the next one? Seahawks, Jets. Seahawks uh, dominated this thing 40-3. to three. They, they um, did not take too kindly to losing to the Giants last week, so they had to make up for that. Russell Wilson, 260 yards passing only, but four touchdowns. Out of the, those, he spread those things around there. DK Metcalf got one. Will Disley got one. Swain got one. And David Moore got one. None for T- Tyler Lockett there. And not a lot on the ground here. I mean, it was spread out again. C- Carson had 12 carries, 76 yards. A touchdown. Hyde had 15 for 66. The yards per carry were good. Just uh, at least Carson got himself one touchdown. But just a dominating game for the for the Seahawks there. And the Jets. Do we need to talk about the Jets? Actually, we, we don't. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, we don't. There is there is literally no fantasy option on that team, so just do not use them. They are bad. And they don't care about winning, I guess. Um, they just don't. All right, how about the next one? Packers beat the Lions and finally end our hopes as Lions fans. 
know, we had that little sliver, that little, very, very little sliver of playoff hope, and now that was dashed by the Packers once again. Has happened. It's happened pretty much all my entire life. Um, remember early on as a young kid watching Sterling Sharp catch a long touchdown in like the 93 or four playoffs or something, 94 playoffs probably, I think. Um, I remember that far throwing it up to Sterling Sharp. Lions lose it, lost again. This, this is just this is just normal for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just or, you know, been going on for 30 years. So, But um, Rodgers, he's been really, really good. He continues to be really good. 290 yards, three touchdowns. Devontae Adams, again, he's been really, really good. And he continues to be really, really good. Seven for 115, a touchdown. Valdez Scantling got a touchdown, six for 85. And Robert Tanyan gets a touchdown, five for 36. Not as much on the ground today for Aaron Jones. Oh, I should mention that Aaron Rodgers got himself a rushing touchdown too. So he had four total. Aaron, Aaron Jones went 15 for 69. Nothing, not a huge game from him. It was just, you know, just the way the way the game went. It, they probably could have just ran the ball to Aaron Jones all day and dominated the Lions too. Who knows? <laughs> Lions side of things, Stafford throws himself a touchdown, gets hurt at the end. Um, he threw that one touchdown to TJ Hawkinson. So nice there. Oh, and then um, – on the ground, De- DeAndre Swift came back, but only seven for twenty-four. Look at these rushing stats for the Lions. I mean, ugly, very, very ugly. I mean, seven for twenty-four for Smith Swift. Yeah, that touchdown helps. Peterson, four for seven. Carry on Johnson, two for three. Yeah, Swift was playable, but they spread the ball around rushing wise. It was very bizarre. I mean, truly. Yeah. Uh, you know, nothing uh, was going. They had to pass it a lot more, but I mean, it wasn't a blowout. So no. it kind of just shows you that they, they don't feel like they can really establish a run game against a good team. But no. I still think it, moving forward, the only question would be DeAndre Swift. He, he's only seven for 24, but he was uh, four for 26 receiving. He did get the touchdown. It does look like he is the lead back, even though not, you know, the, if you look at the numbers, seven compared to four for carries. Do you, he had good enough numbers to play today. But it wasn't overall, overall fantastic. Do you play him next week? I think I do. Honestly, I think I still do. I mean, I guess obviously a roster situation it can change that. Depends on who you have, but I would still. I mean, he's going to be a top twenty back for me next week. I still feel comfortable with that. All right, how about Eagles Saints? Eagles actually get the win here. This is a bit of a surprise. Twenty four twenty one. I really did a, not see this a coming. Bit. A bit of a surprise. Did, did, did not did not see this one coming at all. Um, I mean, Jalen Hurts didn't do anything like extra, like extraordinary. No, but, but eighteen carries, win, so. eighteen carries for one hundred and six yards. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, he did do that. <laughs> I, was, I was completely looking as a quarterback, <laughs> but he, he did it, and I was completely bad. Like, not that I hated the kid or anything, but a completely bad mouthing. Like, there's no way they're going to get this win or be in this game. Like, I wouldn't. Right. I didn't, play it I you know I was like the Saints would be a good matchup against the Eagles all that out the window I, I was just got like wrong on that they found a way to win Miles Sanders has a monster game as well after you know after just disappearing for the last few well, this is a Miles Sanders thing though he has a massive game 115 yards two touchdowns but he, he had 82 of his 115 yards were on one play that's what happens with him, I swear. He breaks yeah. one of those a lot. It happened. I mean, he's done it, it more does. than once, though. Yeah, so. but he did get two touchdowns as well. So it wasn't like the one was a fluke and then nothing True. else. Like, True. Yeah. But well, the funny thing is, you're, I think uh, the Saints had like an NFL record amount of games, like 53 or 56, something like that, without giving up a 100-yard rusher, and they gave up two in one game. <laughs> so <laughs> there went that. But Jalen Hurts, man, he'd be, he honestly becomes a fantasy option if they're going to run him like this. If that's what they're going to do with Jalen Hurts, he is a, honestly he's an option. He, mm. he, 106 yards on the ground. I mean, he's I, an option. Should, it, he's it, was, an option. it is very good. There's no doubt about that. But I can't. I can't imagine a world where I start him next week. Like, it'd be, I mean, it'd be, really. it'd be, it'd be. I mean, in the situation, if you're in the second round of the playoffs or whatever, yeah, it's really difficult. But hey, yeah, I was like, honestly, I, I can't not imagine sure what the situation this, would be. But I can't <laughs> imagine watching this and then the next NFL team that they play is going to be like. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna let it happen. No, they're gonna make him throw the ball more. You're probably right. <laughs> but uh, speaking of which, though, Taysom Hill, even though he does not have a bad game, you know, <laughs> he was two ninety one for two touchdowns and, and an interception, rushed the ball only five times for thirty three. 
do you think after this loss, this is a moment where they're kind of like, okay, we, we should probably get Breeze back in here? Okay, or do you Breeze, think that's not his fault today? It might not be, but if Breeze is healthy, if he's able to play, they're going to play him. They're going to go right back to him as soon as he's ready. I mean, Hill, yeah, Hill wasn't bad. It's just um, – He was actually – I mean, he was actually pretty good. It, it just didn't – They took him – they didn't score for a long time in this one. And if you're the quarterback yeah. and you don't score points, I mean hey. – They didn't score until the second half. Yeah, and so – they were already down by 17 at that point. Exactly. So like, it, it's it's on Taysom Hill, in my in my opinion. Kamara gets himself eleven carries, fifty yards, touchdown, seven catches for forty four. So you like to see the catches. That's more normal of Alvin Kamara. Um, still not quite the same numbers as he does with Drew Brees. So if you want Drew Brees back, if you have Alvin Kamara on your team. Uh, next up, Chargers, Falcons. Chargers win twenty to seventeen in this one. Justin Herbert comes back from the just, you know. He, He's not been – I mean, the Patriots really did a number on him, I feel like. And, <laughs> they crushed his spirit. I mean, it, it, this game was fine, but it wasn't like he had been doing, I think, a couple, you know, that stretch he had from like week four through 11 was just great. And then I mean, this was okay. 243 yards, two touchdowns. It's, it's not what you were getting before, but still, it's a solid game for a rookie for sure. Um, Austin Eckler has – Come back in a big way, really. 15 carries, 79 yards, but nine catches, 67 yards. So he's racking up the yardage there. Just looking looking really good there. Keenan Allen gets himself a touchdown catch, 9 for 52. So it's good to see that. Hunter Henry, 6 for 41. And I'm fairly certain he left with an injury, so um, which is not surprising. It's just really not <laughs> happening for Hunter Henry, is it? It's just not you, really. You know, you, you say that. It, his numbers are better. They are, but think. it's he's – He's fine. He's fine. He's yeah. just he's not becoming that tight end yet that I want him to. But like tight ends That's develop. True. I mean, I say they take the time to develop. But how long has Hunter Henry been developing them? Like, yeah, he should be there. There's no doubt. And he has that bags. And you're yeah. wondering if next year, like, I won't have as high of expectation that I did the last couple of years. And injury definitely yeah. took him out of it. But with Herbert, he's not out of the running to no, become but- a top five tight end i shouldn't even say top five like we're, we're talking about uh tier two like that's what yeah. we're looking at now kelsey is clearly tier one kittle probably leads tier two until you know until we it's like exactly darren wall with like darren waller there yes yeah. and then so that is who like who else are we going to get into that tier because there has to be more <laughs> i mean tj Hawkinson's going to make a case he is he is so. he is definitely up there i think he'll be probably heading up the tier three or yeah. he'll yeah that's probably where i would put him at the moment yeah. uh for the falcons matt ryan threw for 224 yards one touchdown and three picks not very good there russell gage threw a touchdown to calvin ridley ridley was eight for 124 and a touchdown ito smith was the main back 11 for 42 todd Gurley six for 19. ah yeah, it's sad it's sad it's sad to fell see off that. at the end of this year yeah it's yeah not not great to see that all right, and then final game for us here. It's Washington football team against the 49ers. And Washington goes to 6 and 7, gets another win. Looks like they're going to be a playoff team. What is happening? Right? Dude, Alex Smith, he, he hasn't been putting up big numbers, but I mean, as soon as he came in, they started winning. And he got hurt in this one, which yeah, hopefully it, it's nothing it hopefully it's nothing um too serious because yeah, he has helped them, you know, he's just been a better presence for them there. Um, it says he was removed for precautionary reasons, they said, due to muscle soreness. So it said, and I'm reading this right now, it said that he was available to go back in if something had happened to Dwayne Haskins. So that's good. And you would think he should be back next week for them, um, which would be good for them in general, just, you know, as a team. McKissick, 11 carries, 68 yards, only two catches this time around for 18. Terry McLaurin was a bit of a disappointment, two for 24, but that happens when, you know, Alex Smith, only goes eight for 19 and then get Dwayne Haskins coming. So they didn't really fantasy wise. It wasn't a really big day, but they get the win. Right. So for the 49ers, it's just, a, it's been a lost season for them, honestly, with all these injuries. So what do you do? Nick Mullins is out there. 260 touchdown a pick. Mostert 14 carries 65 yards, but just not the same attack right now. They just no. don't, it, you know, Jeff Wilson gets himself a touchdown. Brandon Ayuk looked pretty good. 10 for 119. So that was a, Solid one there. Debo Samuel, did he leave early, like right away in this one, I believe? I believe so, so yeah. yeah. So hopefully you didn't play him, but you uh, might have. I think there's two things, right? There, number one is Washington, Washington, their defense 
has been able to shine a little bit more and show that they're not a laughing stock by any stretch of the imagination. They're they're pretty good when when they're put in good position. And I think that's really what happened when Alex Smith came in. You you play a certain type of football that you don't put other people in bad situations. And I, it'll be interesting though if Alex Smith is healthy. I mean, if they if they were able to get Antonio Gibson back, um, you know, they're going to make the playoffs almost as a default, like, you know, I mean, just as uh, someone has to go. It would be interesting if they were healthy, if they could actually make someone's lives miserable that first round because they're not a bad team when they're playing at full strength under a – I, I wouldn't even a competent quarterback, right? You don't have to put a big numbers in order to put your team in a good space to win. So that is number one that I want to bring up. It's very interesting to watch Washington now. Number two is San Francisco. It is a lost year. And I'm wondering, like, when you look at them, do you see, like, what do you see for them next year? What do you see for the future? Because I could see there's two different viewpoints at, the, at this point, right? You have that lost season and you're thinking chemistry and everything is going to be off and they're, they're going to be a good team, but not great. Or you can say it is amazing. They have five wins. It is amazing that we've seen Brandon Ayuk do what he's done. And now you'll probably get Debo Samuels back. You'll get Kitt- Kittles back. Uh, you'll get your running backs at full strength and hopefully a lot of your defense as well. Uh, some, you could easily look at this team and say, they're going to be scary good if they don't have the kind of health problems that they did this year. It could be. There's some good receivers there. I mean, yeah. Which, which way would you lean? I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be a good team. I think Kyle Shanahan's too good of a coach. Garoppolo is the, the one who I'm not sure. I'm, like, hopefully, I think Garoppolo is still okay. He's, he's good enough. With, with the kind of receivers he's going to have with Debo and Ayuk and uh, I, I think it, I think if the injuries to the running backs do not occur at this rate next year, I think Garoppolo is a very good fit for this team, for what they want to do. Yep. So I don't, I don't mind him. I think he, you can go far with Garoppolo with this team. But I, I know what you mean, though, right? Because yep. if you're looking at it, you're like, God, they're deep at every right. position now, especially wide receiver. That is the one that we weren't sure. Like, they weren't very deep, but you don't need to when you run the ball like that. But with Debo, we knew that he could play. And with Ayuk now, and then Kittle flashing, flashing that he could be a Kelsey-type tight end. Yep. yep. You're, you're kind of like, man, if you, you could just add one more piece to this puzzle and you could have an unbelievable offense. Right. Yep. And even with all the injuries we talked about, five and eight, I mean, not, not the end of the world. I mean, they're better than a lot of teams still. Well, all right, that will do it for the week 14 recap. We'll be back tomorrow with a mailbag show for you guys. So get your questions in if you're still going in this season. Go to Instagram.com slash fantasy football profit. Um, comment on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash fantasy football profit. Any any way like that will work. We'll get your questions, help you out hopefully uh in week 15. But that'll do it for today. Talk to you guys next time.